guys, how you doing today? I need to repot my beautiful rip salus granulosa. This is a gorgeous plant. I love it. Um, I've had her for a while now, like maybe about a year. You can see, look at her beautiful leaves. I love how they're flat. You can see here. Look how flat they are. And when you get her in really, really bright light, she'll turn a real beautiful purpley red color. I'd say I've had it for about a year now, I suppose. Um, but I want to put her in this pot. She's been living, I've had her hanging up in my living room. And I've been, I've had her sitting in this pot waiting for her <laughs> to outgrow it. Um, I can't really see any roots coming out of the bottom. There's a little bit of bark, but I'm going to go ahead and I just, I rinsed her off. I took her in, rinsed her off really good. So her soil is going to be kind of wet, but we'll see here. rid of that tag there before I lose it. Yeah, she really doesn't need, she's not root bound, but it's not going to hurt her to go into this other pot. That, and I want to give her some new soil because she has been in the soil for quite some time since I got it. I'm just pulling off a little bit of, that isn't going to pull, so I'm just going to snip it. There, after I just rinsed her off, I got her all, I got her all dirty. So I am going to set her down here. I love her salves. I have quite a few. I absolutely love them. I love how they grow. I love the look of them. They just look really tropical. And I love having them hanging all over my house. It just really brings something to them. Now I'm going to put a coffee filter down at the bottom of this pot because it's got little itty bitty tiny holes in it. And the roots get, will get kind of stuck if you're not careful with what you're doing with them. But it's not that big of a deal. But I'm also going to put a lot of perlite in with us. These like to stay at a semi-moist level, but not soaking wet. But they need a lot of aeration. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to put in a scoop of soil. Oops. And another little scoop of perlite. And then I am going to just mix up mix the rub right in my pot. And see where she sits here. Oh, that's good. That's a good level. And I'll just finish filling her in. So yeah, you want really bright light for most of the rope cells, but especially this one, because she will turn a beautiful um, purpley red color. I have, um, I had one of these a, a few years back, and she was growing really beautifully for me, and I don't know what happened. It was outside. I think what happened, well, I know what happened, but we got many days of rain and I didn't think to bring her in because she was like right on my step and it just got absolutely waterlogged so needless to say the roots all rotted and I tried to save some of it I took some cuttings but they just did not make up 
So I went out and bought me another small plant um, because I really, really love this plant and I wanted to have her back in to my plant collection. So whatever you do, don't leave these things out in days and days and days of rain. But anyways, what I was going to say was, um, it was a beautiful, beautiful bright red and purple color. I don't know if I can dig up that particular picture anymore because I have so many pictures it's hard for me to... I would have to sit for hours and hours and hours to look. I just found another dead leaf here. I'm pull out. Oh. If I can get a hold of it. But you want them in a really nice draining soil. Which I did have my other one in. But it was just the fact that it kept getting rained on. So I got this last summer at some point. I might have done an unboxing on it. I'm not sure. I don't, I really don't remember. But these are really easy to propagate. They'll propagate in water. Uh, they'll pop, propagate in spag. So you just cut, like say, if I wanted to propagate this plant, I would cut like maybe one of these off. See how it's branching out like fingers? You could cut one of these off, let it dry out for about an hour or so, stick it down in water, or you could you could even stick it right back down into your into your mother pot. They will also root out really nicely that way. So moss. I'm assuming. I've never tried moss, but I'm sure that it would propagate really nicely that way too. But I'm thinking about move her, moving her. I've got her in a west window. Of course, then it's winter time too. But I've got her in a west window and she's just getting a little bit of um, I have a big grow light kind of over to the side from her and she gets a little bit of that light but I think what I'm going to do is when I take her back in to hang her up um, well I might even hang her back up here in I might hang her up here in my plant room too under my Mars Hydro light or possibly if I have room in my soft window I'll have to see might have to do a little bit of rearranging but um, I'll show you here how red and purple this plant can get. red color and this is super easy to take care of um, <clears throat> I've never had even with my original first one I never had any pests with this plant but I'm sure it seems like it would be susceptible to possibly mealybug or scale um, would affect this plant more than anything I'm thinking but it does have succulent leaves succulent ish leaves so I'm assuming scale <laughs> would really tear this plant up but um, I've never had any issues with it but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen um, as far as humidity this plant this in particular plant of the rips house I don't really think it cares if it has you know any kind of humidity or not since it has such succulent leaves um 
I don't think it would be an issue. So if you have a drier climate, this would probably be a really great plant, you know, to have. But, um, I still do my regimen with her with neem oil. Um, you know, when I, after I clean a plant usually. Now, I didn't do it yet, but I will do it after the video. I'll just spray her down really good. I have, well, no, I don't have any made up right now, I don't think. I'll have to make some more up because I like to do it as I take as I'm taking them down and, and potting them up and I like to pot repot stuff all, all winter long when it needs it I don't usually worry about you know nothing has ever happened in the winter time but other than that I mean I just feed her my fish emulsion and that's it I feed, you know, at least once a week or whenever she needs water, she usually gets fish emulsion because I, I tend to put it in my water every time I fill up my jugs to water. It gets a little cap full of fish emulsion in it and so it's getting a little bit of nutrients, you know, every time I water. But other than that, um, I don't really... think there's anything else to say about this plant um, water it probably when it's about three quarters of the way dry and you should be okay I actually thought about putting her in a terracotta pot but I thought oh, I'll just put her back in this because that's what she's been in I got a beautiful hanger that my friend made me and I've been keeping her in that and I wanted to keep her in that so in this pot looks really nice with the beautiful hanger that my friend Chris made me so I want to keep her in that but I'm gonna go ahead and just spray her down with some neem oil I'll have to go in and make some um, real quick and get her all nice and cleaned up and shiny and she will be all ready after she dries off she will be all ready um, to go back up in her hanging spot Ripsala Spramulosa and I think they call it ramulosa because it just, it rambles. It just grows. You can see how it grows. I love how it grows. Get these big, beautiful fingers that kind of stretch out. And I love the shape of the leaves. See how they're kind of... There we go. See how they have that beautiful edging on them? Very nice looking plant, and even better with when she gets some color to it and gets some stressed. So, alright guys, I am going to let you go, and I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.